everybody it's chaos back again so today i'm bringing you another video um but i'm going to try to make this two-parter because i have well maybe even a three or four but i have a couple of variants of the hammer of the ancients build um that i always been using so the um, legacy hammer of the ancients have evolved a little bit and my goal from the get-go was to actually eliminate the amount of the pieces that you need from the legacy gear sets to the new 2.0 system so today i've actually achieved the ultimate goal which is to eliminate every single piece of legacy gear and go with nothing but 2.0 gear and actually survive and do torment six so what i have today i'm just going to go ahead and blast through these items really quick i'm even using a two-hander from ptr or not ptr from 2.0 so you know this is not the optimal choice so what i'm about to show you is not optimal gear but it works in torment six and there is one staple in this build and it's going to be the ik set and it's mostly for the fact that it will generate your fury and it'll give you healing options um but once again the weapon already shows that this is not going to be optimal in fact this is a wizard soj just because i don't really have any decent rings i could slap on any ring with strength and it will work but i, I need the elite damage so i'm going with this the only other soj i have is my legacy and then I also have um, this amulet, which I rather not get attack speed, but I rather get a crit hit damage. But uh, I don't have that right now, so uh, I'll live with that. Uh, something that I found. And skills. This is what we're working with with skills. And paragon points. And I'll explain these points in the manner in which they are important, or the priorities of them after. And what I'm going to show you guys, before I forget, I'm just going to do that. And say hi to those guys there because you'll see them quite a bit. I'm going to show you a run through um, Leoric's and I'm going to fight an elite on Torment 6. Now I'm, what I'm about to show you is not because this is fast or this is supposed to be Torment 6 farming. I'm showing you this is for the fact that it can survive Torment 6. So what that means is you can pick any level that you like to play on and then actually go from there. So you don't have to say, you know, run Torment 6 and you can still be really, really quick in other Torments. I'm gonna skip all those white trash mobs because there's really no need to show that. So here's an elite. So they have vortex. Uh, what else do they got? It's got moved around too much. Now I'm gonna let you know right now with the Call of the Ancients. I've tested them since PTR, and um. The one thing about them being on PTR is that they do die on Torment 5 and beyond, but on live, I'm not sure if because my gear got a lot better, um, but they actually survive a lot longer. And these guys are actually quite weak of a mob. They don't have any real big threats of damage. And now this grouping here is really nice because of Threatening Shout, and I'm just going to show you and go into detail, of course it's going to be a detailed build guide. And by the way, there's no life steal, of course, because it's all 2.0 gear. And um, this is Torment 6, guys. Just to let you know. If you haven't already figured it out. I'm fighting an elite on Torment 6. With suboptimal gear from 2.0. And a two-hander, of all things. And a 90% gem because I am too cheap to buy a 100% or 100 and three 100s and turn into 110 or whatever. All right, so they are completely down. That wasn't fast once again. This is not for speed. I just want to show you that that's a decent issue there. My cursor's here, buddy. What the hell is this? Oh, the iron gate. Oh, that's stupid. Okay, so I just killed the Elite in Torment 6 to show you that it is viable. You can run whatever Torment you want with this because you can do 6 and actually live. And this is the gearing. Now, the 3-piece set is really the key to IK set in my opinion. The 4th piece um, is going to be actually where this set shines. And there's, you know, a couple ways you can do the 4th set. You see I'm missing 2 pieces. I actually have the IK glove here. And, um, give me a second here, guys. Uh, 
Um, so I'm basically going to go ahead and run down these items here. Now, I have Ice Climbers in this build because it's a low mobility build, unlike a Whirlwind build. Not being able to be frozen or jailed is really important. I find these to be pretty much BIS boots in this opinion or in, in this build. Um, and then as far as, like, say, um, that takes away the IK boots as one of the four pieces that you can use. Um, the glove, if you basically roll a better weapon in the future version, you can actually use the weapon as a fourth piece. That'll actually work out great if it becomes the piece that you like. If not, you could use the glove in this area here. But I like the um, Mage Fist. The Mage Fist that I got is actually really good. And um, it is basically going to be a 9.5 or 8.5 crit chance on this one. Crit chance doesn't roll innate on these guys. So that's actually a really lucky roll. I was given these gloves. So thank you to my clan mate that actually gave me these. Um, and as far as like rings go, you have ring options so if you like the procs on rings and rings could be pretty powerful you go whatever you like same with the amulet you know there's nothing on this amulet so really open ideally you would want like say a legendary bracer with 20 percent fire damage because they could roll 20 on a legendary but otherwise this is a found rare you can actually craft this and actually get the same result um shoulders your flavor your text your choice whatever you want on there I go with the Vile Wards is because the most important things to me are all available here. Armor, not so much, but I mean, you know, whatever. Um, I would probably prefer it over fit, uh, Vit anyways. Because my goal is to be under 100,000 HP and basically, you know, buff whatever the mitigation would be allowed instead of upping this. Because it makes your heals irrelevant if you go that route. Um... And that's basically it. Pants, Pox Falls would be the BIS pants in this because Threatening Shout, as you can see earlier, just groups everything around you. Pox Falls would then proc and just literally melt everything away for you along with your DPS. So my 89,000 DPS is doing T6. A lot of people online or on Reddit has been asking about DPS in general. And it is a useless number, guys. Like if you know how to build your character and you know the gear that you need to work with, you don't care about this number. It's pointless. Toughness, a million, is more than enough to do um, T6 with a barb. And, you know, it, it's all about mitigation. And you can get more mitigation from skills than you do with gear. So I focus on regen a lot. And regen gives you basically ability to heal while you're not fighting or you're positioning or you're kiting whenever you're not attacking. And since you're using a two-hander to maximize this build, your attack speed is low already. So... Relying on regen and high mitigation actually works out better, in my opinion. And a couple of people that I've talked to actually jumped from T4 straight to T6 purely for the fact that they switched up their um, Paragon points. So um, let's go with Paragon points before we actually get to the build. So let's we'll start with core. Movement speed, just cap it at 25 like every other build out there. And then once you get 25, put it all in maximum fury. Unlike a whirlwind build where you don't want more fury um, or any other non spender build that you might want as low fear as possible um you could go with maximum fury here um and obviously for anybody that uses hammer of the ancients you would know why because every five fury that you gets one percent crit chance right so in the maximum state you know 50 points 50 fury that's 10 um, percent crit chance so that is actually a one percent for every point that you put in or uh, for every 10 points that you put in it's, it's actually a one percent for every five but that's actually a really good trade-off uh, one one percent for every five points um, because we go to the next tab well actually this is you know 25 percent so this is secondary and then whatever you need to balance out because these never cap so the second tab attack speed on this build is actually better um, because unlike the other pets and i think i've been reading that they don't scale with attack speed the call of the ancients guys actually do and when you attack with higher attack speed with them they generate more fury so in essence, they give you more EDPS. So that is actually a really good stat to have when you start to mess with these guys. Um, so I usually don't like attack speed, um, but in this build, you actually want to aim for it. And having higher attack speed will also help with your healing. So, you know, all that, that helps a little bit. And then crit hit damage is better because crit hit chance right now, the maximum that you get out of 50 points is 5. So we go back to this, right? You get 10 points maximum here. So, I mean, 10% maximum here with 50 points. So one for every 5. This is 1% for every 10. You only get a maximum of 5% here. So this is a better way to get crit than the actual crit chance thing. So right now, go with crit hit damage as your second. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's really no cooldown needed, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And in defense, 
I always value life regen before all resources, before armor, before life. As you can see why. I wasn't dying, and this regen actually kept me in the fight longer. It mitigated, like, poison damage. It mitigated a whole bunch of stuff. So always life regen before resist, before armor, before life, because resist is harder to get as a barb than it is armor, and life does nothing if you can't mitigate it. In fact, the more life you have, the harder it is to heal. So one, two, three, four, okay? And utility. I put cost reduction still just because of the fact that extra fury in your pool means extra crit chance. So number one, area damage is number two because life on hit while you're attacking really slowly does absolutely nothing. Um, so one, two, three, because it's still go better than gold fine. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And then we'll go to the build. And I'm going to try to speed through this because I, this is like the sixth time I made this video due to whatever reasons, noise, whatever. Um, but Hammer the Ancient Smash, best rune in the game, I think, for Hammer the Ancients. Really good. Um, fire damage in general has a lot of different ways that you can amp the damage. You have um, Endariel's Helm, you have Mage Fist, Cinder Coat, which also reduces the cost uh, of the actual thing. And this is a build that don't even require Cinder Coat. Kick ass, right? Um, and then you also have, um, yeah, like Legendary Bracers to give you 20%. So Amulets to give you 20%. There's a lot of ways to get fire damage um, that otherwise you wouldn't. So this is actually a really good skill, just if you want to max DPS. But that's the theme of fire damage anyways, right? And once again, I'm going to reiterate this because Hammer the Ancients, 1% crit chance for every 5 Fury that you currently have in your globe. Not max, but in your globe. Um, so, by far the best primary attack. This is the thing with me when I talk about Hammer the Ancients build. Hammer the Ancients build is not putting Hammer the Ancients in your build. Hammer the Ancients build is using Hammer the Ancients as your primary attack. That's the difference of my build versus the other Hammer the Ancients builds. But there are a lot of people out there that are starting to do this because... I've been spreading the word, so, you know, like I said, if people are starting to catch on, great, because I really want this to have more um, exposure. Because Hammer of the Ancients is one of my favorite builds, and I like the way the bar plays with it. So, enough of that. Um, threatening Shout. Demoralize. Demoralize is, as you've seen in action, really good to cluster things together to give Hammer of the Ancients more effective uptime DPS time, because um, this does AoE. And when you cluster them close enough together, the AoE will also uh, proc Bloodshed. And then Threatening Shout will also proc Brawler. So the Threatening Shout is great because the 20% reduction is actually 15 seconds and it's 25 yards out. But the cooldown is only 10. So it gives you basically 150% um, uptime versus 100% if it was a 15 second cooldown. And it's actually a really good generator per second. It gives you 1.5 per second of cooldown that you need um, because it generates 15 for 10 seconds cooldown. Um, so the ratio of everything on this guy is really good. And this is one of the weakest skills in, you know, vanilla. But if I had a chance in a free slot to put anything in, Threatening Shout's one of my first skills that I think of now. Um, I actually could say that with a lot of skills because I love a lot of the skills now. But Threatening Shout has just, like, leveled itself up so many times, um, basically with all the synergies that I see with it. And it, it is extra fury production when you need it. It is a reduction of damage and is a percentage reduction. Um, it has 150% uptime. It is actually a snare and not a snare, but it is actually a, a lure. So basically a four second lure where basically everything will group up around you and it'll proc brawler without you having to do anything else. Um, it is better than ground stomp in my opinion um, because it does more. And it comes back quicker. So threatening shout, as you can see how I'd use it, really, really good skill to have. Fierce charge is going to be your one main escape skill. And the one characteristic of an escape skill that you definitely want is going to be something you could jailbreak. Um, of course, for me, with ice climbers, it's not an issue. Um, you want something that will get you away from any kind of, like, say, CC effect. So with merciless charge, you can ignore knockback, fear, vortex, frozen, jailer. You could like, ignore all of those during the animation. So if you're good with your charges, like a lot of vanilla barbs before Whirlwind was popular, um, you, you probably remember dodging or activating charge during the time of the frozen orbs to not get frozen. If you're one of those barbs, then you know you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the OG barbs from way back when, uh, using charge to dodge things. 
Um, it's still the same theory, but with merciless charge, because it comes back on a cooldown or has innate cooldown reduction, it is the most readily available escape skill for a bard. You get surrounded, you charge through them. It does bug out from time to time, which like infuriates me like no nobody's business. Um, but at the same time, it is the most dependable single slot skill to escape something that a barb has. Um, nearly staple in most of my builds, except for when you have Whirlwind, of course. Um, Call of the Ancients, Ancient Sphere, when you have a four-piece IK set, this is really the entire thing. I mean, a lot of the other runes, they look fancy. I've tried all of them. This is by far the most beneficial. EDPS it's so good when you don't have to worry about Fury anymore. This is like the new Battle Rage into the fray. Now, just FYI, I've done extensive testing with these guys. There are things that will kill them quite quickly, like if the Molochs, um on Act 3, like Fields of um, Slaughter, where they shoot all those fireballs, those guys are coming drones, and they can actually down the, the Call of the Ancients guys quite quickly um, on T6. And even on T4 and 5, they take damage. So they, for some reason, they just do an extensive amount of damage, and they come in drones. Fallens take these guys out like nobody's business. Um, ironically, they can stand in Molten, the, the explosion from Molten and not die, but the Fallen, like there's something about white mobs that they're just not mitigating um, versus elites. So, I mean, th those high burst damage areas, um, you're going to have some issues if you're soloing in groups. If you melt everything, not going to be an issue. But in, in solo play, you have to be a little careful when you rely on these guys. Um, but if you're playing solo, you can skip those areas. So it's not a big deal. And um, Bloodshed, a lot of people are now starting to really, you know, put this in every build and talking about how it procs and stuff like that. So there's already a lot of exposure. I've been using this since the beginning of PTR. And I've already said at that time, Hammer of the Ancients and Battle Rage is a good marriage. Because just to explain the mechanic behind Battle Rage, it procs on crits. So what gives you the most crits? Hammer of the Ancients because it has built-in crit damage or crit chance. And it, the proc that you get from this is 20% of the damage being dealt is going to spread 20 yards out. So what gives you the most damage? Hammer the Ancients. I don't need to explain that any further because that is the synergy between these two. Um, it just causes gobs of explosion and it does quicker than Renwood. And, you know, Ren is good for trash farming, but if you want to fight elites, this is a godsend. So, you know, staple, staple. Warcry, this is like one flex slot. If you're doing lower torment, um, this is one fury per second. So, you know, 20 second cooldown, um, 20 fury. This is a better, better fury generator than this. So don't use this unless you use charge. And charge is by far the best right now ratio-wise. But um, you could go with another skill like uh, overpower, which will probably be better per second because you get so many crit with momentum. Um, you get five fury per target hit. And with threatening shout, it becomes a lot of fury really quick. So you can go with that. Um, you can go with Earthquake, Wrath of the Berserker. You can go with, uh, well, Avalanche in ROS. And, you know, this could be a flex slot. But I use this because I play Torment 6. And I can tell you right now, anything after Fields of Slaughter in Act 3, the damage ramps up really high. I am capable of doing everything from Act 1 all the way to Act 3 pretty comfortably. And die from time to time because there's still effects mobs that are just so devastating. Like Vortex Arcanes or... Vortex anything, Vortex Fire Chains, Teleport Fire Chains. Um, but I think with this new setup with Threatening Shot in there, I could survive pretty well. Um, but other than that, I mean, like I said, this is a flex slot for those that don't need it, but I play Torment 6, so for me, this is a staple. And the bottom three guys here, Superstition is a 20% el elemental damage reduction, which is the heaviest kind of damage that you could take in right now, especially Fire. And then Threatening Shot's another 20% reduction. You got like 40% reduction coming in from two slots of your skill set um that's like almost ignore pain you know that that's how good these two skills are together so if you're not running these and you're playing high torment you're doing something else crazy because you got gear that probably carry you or another thing or another way to, to survive i just don't see why not right you get fury generation you get mitigation and this generates fury as well so everything that you want you have in you know one passive unforgiving Along with the IK set, now you remember the IK set will give you two Fury per second. Unforgiving does the same thing, so why the redundancy? Well, that's because if you read the first sentence, you no longer degenerate Fury. As a barb, you should already know you lose two Fury per second. And basically from that two Fury per second, when you gain the two Fury back with IK set, you just break it even. And 
when you throw in unforgiving, you no longer degenerate. So you take that penalty out. Now you're generating a flat four per second. And if you have the Templar, it's 4.4 per second. So that's actually a lot of generation that you gain just for having unforgiven. And the reason why that's important is like, let's say I'm finding something and I'm kiting. Not ready yet. I'm casting uh, Battle Rage, right? And what that does is heal me because of the IK set. And you can see how many heals that I can pump out all at once. This is um, 20 points worth of Fury. I have reduction in the Paragon points, so basically 10% to 2 off of this. So 18 times 289. Um, you know, that's like about 4,000 something um, every time I cast this. And that could give you a lot of uh, hit points. I mean, it's basically like about 4%, you know, or like 5% of life every time that I pump that out. That is as good as doing a um, revenge, you know. So that is the reason why I have such high regeneration. And of course, it also feeds into crit chance and stuff like that. And then Brawler for purely just above the DPS. And Threatening Shut almost automatically gives you that. So it is a really easy way to keep this up. Um, even if they're kiters like Quillbacks and KD2, you can use this, and this will always be effective, you know, and they'll get in close range, and the downtime is not so bad. You get four seconds of hammer time, and four seconds, you could do, um, in my legacy gear, I could do quite a bit of damage, and in this, you're looking at about like six to eight million uh, hit points worth of damage. Um, so that is it for the build, and I'm going to go into part two and show you guys the legacy gear version of this. So what I've you know, accomplished with all of this new gear that I found because I've actually gotten quite a new, you know, set of pieces and stuff like that. But once again, 100,000 DPS, Torment 6, under a million EHP, Torment 6. Um, and 1.2 of you buffed it. So this is fully buffed stats, guys. Torment 6, okay? Um, so I'll see you in the next video, and I'll keep that one a little shorter because I've gone really extensive on this one, okay? Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.